Hello, friends, family, and my followers. This is Hike360, and I'm here to give you a new hike this week. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo! Hike360 here, and uh, we are at the trailhead for the Shabona Lake State Park Trail. Uh, in the, our book, it actually says this is a state recreation area, but uh, I think it is a state park. So we've got a five, no, 4.9 mile hike ahead of us. Uh, we're gonna be doing the Tomahawk Trail, uh, which brings us around the Shabona Lake, up to the Snowmobile Trail, and then back down the Arrowhead Trail uh, to make it the full loop around the Shabona Lake. Now, what's interesting is Shabona Lake is, and this whole area, in fact, is only 30 years old. Uh, it used to be completely farmland uh, until 30. <laughs> Bug flew on my dad's glasses. Um, used to be just farmland uh, until 30 years ago when they uh, uh, renovated the area and created the man-made lake, which is Shabona Lake. So let's see what we can see today. Okay, so we're at the first opening with the Tomahawk uh, Trail here, and man, just wide open landscape ahead. Pretty cloudless day, and so uh, everything's popping over here. Super lucky to have such a gorgeous day on November 5th. We're gonna have to be careful because there is um, hunting is allowed right now, so we gotta make sure we stay on our trails. And looks like right here is a split between our trail and the hunting area. I wonder what they hunt over here. Deer, mink, minks. <laughs> yeah, terrible story. Hi. So it looks like there's some treetops here in the middle of the lake, which they look like they've been here, or they were here when they flooded and created the lake, and they're just still sticking around. Okay, that's exactly something he mentioned in the book, okay. that the evidence of this being man-made recently was the tops of tree, trees <laughs> coming out of the water. All right. Well... <laughs> All right, I want to introduce a new segment. <laughs> Ryan doesn't even know what's happening here. No idea. We have been talking about our food uh, privately, but we haven't been talking about it publicly. And so, uh, since we're picnicking here, picnic on the dam here at Shabona, uh -huh. I thought we might talk about how we, we do our meals. Oh, man. So today's sandwich, is homemade bread. Dad I, makes the best homemade bread. I've been making homemade bread for well over 10 years. Yeah. yeah. Certainly before the, the pandemic virus and everybody was all of a sudden newbie bread makers and I couldn't get any bread flour in the stores. Yeah, that was fun. But uh, yeah, I've been making bread for over 10 years because I got tired of corn syrup in the bread that I bought you when you were a kid. I'm like, why, why am I giving my kid corn syrup in his bread? That was just kind of ridiculous to me, so. If it's caught with corn syrup, it's not, not a good situation. No. So, uh, so we got homemade bread, which is four ingredients. Well, it's, actually I make it with five, but uh, you know, it's, it's flour, salt, water, and yeast. Okay. Um, and then I add a little uh, cinnamon for a little bit of more sweet uh, flavor on the sweet side. Uh, of course, you can't taste the sweetness. It just, you know, adds a little background. And then you brought back from the store a new find in sunflower butter. Yeah, I've, uh, I, I guess I've just been exploring the different nut butters that are available out there. Uh, he said nut butter. Nut butter. <laughs> so, like, I, I found sunflower butter at the grocery store that I work at. For a pretty decent price, it's like six dollars for a tub. Almond butter, I saw a couple jars at my grocery store. 
for like 11 and even as high as like $24. But so I was like, okay, well, let's try sunflower butter. So I got sunflower butter and. Yeah, a little history on that. Of course, we've been doing, uh, trying to find good peanut butter. So good peanut butter to me is, is peanut butter that has peanuts. <laughs> maybe a little salt added, maybe oil, but really just peanuts. And um, what you don't know is uh, way before you were born, I actually uh, priced out and wanted to buy a peanut grinder so I could make my own oh, peanuts at home. That would be awesome. Yeah, you can do that. Um, and it's really hard to find peanut butter in the store that is good. Uh, there are a lot of natural, or peanut butters that have natural on the label, but they still have sugar added and they still have other things added to them. And it's, I just don't understand why we can't just have peanuts and that's about it. Right. Uh, when right. you buy fresh ground peanut, butter which some stores do carry uh, far and few in between it's it's awesome but this sunflower butter pops this is poppy this is great stuff so we got sunflower oil on, or sunflower butter on here and then well so let me just say yeah the sunflower butter is one of the most sensational foods that I've had in a while I would agree with that and then we've been experimenting with different jellies, and uh, of course that is the sh you know that's the sugar side. Um, I like honey. We've uh, done agave. Ryan, I like agave. Ryan can't do honey, so agave is okay on the list. Um, I can't do honey because I'm vegan, by the way. Right. Um, some of the jellies are you know they're just jelly and added sugar, so we try to do our best there. Do some preserves, but uh, Ryan, as he went through his butter exploration went through a jelly expiration I didn't want to just eat, you know feed myself spoonfuls of butter to try out the new butters that I was finding so uh, so you know I had to start experimenting with the bread I was getting and experimenting with the jelly I was getting and uh, I was trying out some different brands going away from typical smuckers or bon maman and trying any uh, brand that was well different from that so I found this ginger preserve jelly and I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head I think the brand was called McKee's oh, uh, it's English an English looking label okay I'll, I'll definitely link it in the description of the video but oh my gosh, this ginger jelly though, it's made in small batches and it is just as sensational and flavorful as the sunflower butter. So we're having a sandwiches here today I, and I make my, my homemade bread usually on the weekend. Um, so it's, you know, you want to utilize it pretty much right away. So. I make the bread, um, usually the next day I carve off uh, the slices and I make the sandwiches. This is sunflower butter and the ginger preserve, which, I mean, it's, it's like nothing I've ever had before. <laughs> and it just, it, it makes me feel good. I'm excited every mm. time I eat it. I just feel like it's, it's the right place at the right time. It's just, it's exa exactly what I would want to extravagantly give myself on a hike. Mm. And it checks all the boxes that I want to have checked. Um, so I make the sandwiches typically on Sunday or, or Monday, and I put them in the freezer. And that's perfectly, this is good solid bread. It holds up to being frozen in a normal freezer. Of course, I've got a tub freezer as well that I could use, but I just put these, because we eat them pretty quickly in the regular freezer and pull them out a day ahead. We're good to go. Man. So these are still cold, uh, they're thawed, but they're still cold, and solid. So that's today's lunch. So grateful for it. Oh, of course, you can't see the Pepsi that I have behind me, so all of that, <laughs> all of that talk is negated by the fact that I got a Pepsi behind me. But yeah, Well, we haven't really gone far, we're just at the other end of the dam, but uh, I really like this, oh thank you. I like this river view, kind of a deep cut. This is the Indian Creek. Indian Creek, okay. And then the, the lake level control. 
I guess our day is full of uh, water, water control devices. Wow, so cool. Yeah, apparently the guy in the book said, uh, yeah, it's okay, just hop the fence. That's what so. he said. There you go. <laughs> you want to see me go over the rear? <laughs> there goes Dad. <laughs> Where are my glasses? You got them? Yeah. Okay. Over at the uh, at the park on the eastern side of the state park here, uh, walking out to closer to the middle of uh, Shabona Lake here, and across the way I'm looking at RVs and I'm finding out that there is uh, a campground here, so. Definitely looking and am interested in camping here when the uh, weather gets nicer this coming spring. Because this is this is actually a really really beautiful spot. Everything's well kept and it's just nice, man. A lot of fishers over here, so if you're into fishing, this might be your spot. Boat launch, there's a little restaurant next to the park here. It's in the state park, but next to the, uh, next to the boat launch. All right, so we are just started the, what the heck is this trail now? The Arrowhead Trail. Arrowhead Trail. We went through the campgrounds and uh, most of them are blocked off. Uh, we have to look up to see if this is a year-round campground. But they look pretty neat during the regular season. And a uh, uh, big question mark, we have a conflict of distance. The colored maps say two and a half miles for the Arrowhead and then the wooden old-fashioned map that's right in front of the campground it says four miles so this will either be two and a half or four miles i guess we'll update you on the end uh so here we are tomahawk trail this is the blue arrowhead one. trail arrowhead we came off of the tomahawk and now we're on arrowhead good correction yes we are still on the which Arrowhead. Sorry, we're getting a little giddy. Now, uh, Ryan and I had a bit of a bet as to whether there'd be a bridge. And here's a bridge. Now, I have to say we both lost because this is not, I was expecting a nice, ornate, big bridge that I thought I saw in the picture book. And uh, so, anyway, that's a bridge. What else is going on? Oh, around here is that tree with the brain fruit or the brain seeds. That was kind of interesting. About yay big, like the size of a softball. And uh, it's kind of squishy. And then uh, we saw a tree that had some bark chewed off at the base. Um, which the book did say to look for the beavers active. Now, it's interesting um, that we haven't seen more trees like that with all the hikes because beavers are kind of all over the place. I think this, uh, what? Oh, it's a nice looking bird, whatever that is. Okay, I don't see it. Get the wood back here. It's two of them. Three oh, of them. I see. One, two, three. Um, so last night we were at Loudon State Park and we had coyotes. We're starting to hear more coyotes. Maybe it's a winter thing. 
right, we're gonna be quiet in a second this is a water fowl resting refuge boy that was tough to say <laughs> So we're still on the tomahawk. Nope, arrowhead. <laughs> uh, but we're away from <clears throat> the main lake. Found this little pond. What impresses me so much right now is uh, thinking about this area as farm, because it sure does not look that way now. And uh, I think they did a pretty nice job. Did I say that in the last video? Well, I think I said that they did a nice job at the park facilities. Yeah, no, it's it's really cool that this is all only 30 years old. And I want to give a shout out to Neil, who finally just got back to me on text. Hey, shout out Neil. Hey, hey Neil, how you doing? We don't do that enough. Shout out, Neil. You the man, brother. <laughs> Creator of the logo. All right, so I uh, just fi kind of finished saying it's hard to get lost here because it's well marked. And uh, uh, shortly after that, we got put onto the yellow trail. Yellow trail. You know why they call it the yellow trail? Why? Because the yellow stripe down the road. Oh, this is the yellow trail. The yellow trail. Uh, the trusty the yellow trail which That's is good. well marked <laughs> yes very well marked and uh i gotta say what i like even though we're walking down the side of a road and this is a park road so i mean it's not like we're on a county highway or something but uh this does not look like illinois and we got these great pines and uh you know the prairie thingies <laughs> The uh, cattails? Cattails, yeah. It just uh, feels good. I mean, it does not feel like we're in Illinois. I feel good. So good. This is definitely a way to get out of the city. Highly recommend the day hike. I assume the camping would be just as good. Fishing is uh, looks to be incredible here. All right, we're going to end it here.